dishwashing philosopher is back. Although I really don't have a lot of philosophizing to do in this episode, but there are a couple of members who I feel like they were not getting their dishwashing fix. Maybe I'll do some more for you in a couple of weeks time. So I finished my lion diet challenge. Uh, there's some people say, no, that's not what a lion eats. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Um, all right, lion diet, for those of you who don't know, the general term is used for a way of eating that is really just meat based. So ruminant meats, uh, beef and lamb, salt, and that's pretty much it. And <laughs> I think that's pretty much what a lion would eat, right? Although he probably doesn't have access to lamb and uh, beef all the time. Anyway, so I did do a, a 30 day lion diet challenge a while ago and uh, you can check out that playlist up there. If you, if you haven't seen those videos, it was an interesting experience. And so after I finished that, I, I went back. Uh, I also went without coffee, without alcohol. I went back on back on back on the coffees again, one or two a day, which I'm pretty happy with. Um, but I have noticed that I'm just feeling kind of blo like fat and puffy and bloated, right? And I don't know if it's the addition of the eggs, bacon, cheese, or or anything else. But I, I I've noticed how I feel so much better if I just just eat meat, just the ruminant meats alone. So. I guess that's one thing I've gotten out of it is that, and I don't feel deprived or starved or anything like that. I just feel better. And I mean, I felt great <laughs> doing carnival before, but I just feel that bit better. And I'm less inclined to overeat. I'm just, I'm one of these people and I, and I wish I wasn't, but I am. I do tend to overeat pretty easily with super tasty food. And I find if I just have some, you know, ground beef fried in the pan, tastes great, really like it but I'm far less inclined to overeat on that. I'll, if I go and then put some eggs in with the ground beef, I'll, I'll end up eating too much of it and more often than not. So, you know, I think going going forward, I'm, I'm more of a, a lion diet person than anything else than what I was uh, prior to this. So thank you to all those people who provided feedback about how I could resolve my sciatica. You know, one person said, there's no way that diet's going to resolve your sciatica. Other people said you need to go to the physio um, and get a massage. Uh, there's stretching. And I think there are different solutions for different people. And for those of you who are dealing with sciatica and you haven't tried just sleeping with a pillow between your knees, doubled over like this, then I highly recommend that you give that a try because that worked for me within two to three days. I had sciatica for a number of months now I just sleep with the pillow between my legs, which is actually a lot more comfortable to sleep that way anyway. And the sciatica has not come back at all. And that's even after I've, you know, changed my diet back to the sort of usual carnivore-ish way that I eat. So give it a try if you're still dealing with sciatica and you've been doing lots of other things and you find it isn't completely resolved. It is completely resolved for me. Absolutely no pain at all. When I first started eating the carnival way, people would say, isn't that a pretty expensive, like doesn't that make your grocery more expensive by eating that way? And my initial reaction was, oh, maybe, I don't know. I mean, I'm doing this for my health, right? If it costs a little bit more, so what? But I actually don't think it does. And I think that that can be a stumbling block for some people, as in they think it's going to be way more expensive. So they won't even try their carnivore diet to help improve their health. So I thought I'd just put together a list of meals. So these are my these are five meals where you can eat the carnival way for less than five dollars a meal. So I mean a five dollars Aussie per meal. And the first one is ground beef. Now I can buy two kilograms, which is uh, let me see, about four and a half pounds of ground beef. We call it mince here in Australia, for about twenty dollars. And so a serving, like for one meal, is usually about a quarter of that. So five hundred grams you know, around about, I guess, three quarters of a pound. That's five bucks. And I like to just fry the ground beef in the pan. Or if you want to get a little bit fancier, you can turn it into hamburger patties and cook them that way. You can add an egg in if you want something to sort of help bind it together. But that is my number one super cheap, super fulfilling meal. And it's one that I never get sick of. The next one is one of my favorites, which is roast lamb. I know in the States, lamb isn't as cheap as what it is here. We can buy a kilo and a half roast lamb here for um, 
a, a little over ten dollars like about twelve thirteen dollars here so uh, one roast lamb someone my size which is you know 200 pounds six foot one that's enough meat in that for the entire day by the time you take out the bone you get about sort of a kilo of meat out of it which is a bit over two pounds so that's definitely in the five dollars per meal category the next one is rump steak now that's a little bit on the edge there depending on you know what the price is and how hungry i am but usually if i buy one of these big one kilogram packs of uh, rump steak i can have half of one of those for a meal and i should point out that i have two meals per day so i generally have pretty big meals when i do eat next one is bacon and eggs now i used to eat bacon egg all the time every day i don't eat quite so much of it now but there's no denying that it is uh, super cheap so you can get a 750 gram pack of bacon from aldi for i think it's now six dollars and then the eggs per dozen are about four dollars fifty so all that is ten dollars fifty and there's enough in that for two really big meals easily so five dollars a meal there and the last one which i pretty much never make but i have got the recipe on my channel here which is for pork belly bites because the pork belly is very high in fat you tend to eat less of it in one sitting and generally the pork belly that i can buy from aldi works out to be about 10 11 12 dollars usually eat about half of that maybe not even half if you're going to eat the pork belly bites it's very filling nowhere near the same volume of food but very very filling nonetheless so there's another five dollar meal for you as well and i think you should check out that video over there next yep that's going to be a good one for you, you should go and have a look see you later